To understand how deer think, you need to see the world through their eyes. Scrapes glow like neon signs at twilight. And what my thermal drone captured about buck behavior around scrapes will change everything about how you hunt them. You had a big buck on camera hitting your scrapes and then he disappeared. Now your cameras only show does or small bucks. You think he's nocturnal or he's moved on, so you stop hunting that spot. But that mature buck is likely still there. Ghosting your cameras, and I've got thermal drone footage to prove it. I've been studying active scrapes using a thermal drone in South Carolina, where our rut is earlier than most places. And what I found helps you get inside of his pattern. I've got three discoveries. The first one reveals why scrapes literally glow to deer like neon signs. The second discovery, why your trail camera on a scrape are likely misleading you. And the third one, how to make a cold scrape hot again. Let's get into it. Discovery number one, I'm not being metaphorical here. Scrapes literally glow to deer like a neon sign in Las Vegas. The University of Georgia researchers just proved this. The fresh urine in scrapes illuminate under UV light. And to a white-tailed buck at twilight, scrapes look like a highway reflector. Here's what that means. Deer have a different vision than what we have. They have two color receptors instead of three, and they have no UV filter. Human eyes block 99% of ultraviolet light before it hits our retina. Deer don't have that. So they are 20 times more sensitive to UV than we are. And here's how it works. Fresh urine contains porphyrins, which are basically organic compounds. And when the UV light hits them, they absorb the invisible ultraviolet energy and split it back as visible light exactly where the deer's vision is optimized. And guess what? Fresh rubs do the exact same thing. Tree sap mixed with a forehead gland secretions glow blue and purple under UV light. Bucks are essentially painting their territory with glow in the dark markers. This is why bucks are hitting scrapes at twilight. They've got a visual cue and scent confirmation, the two signals working together. But as scrapes go like this and attract bucks, why aren't they showing up on your camera? Which brings me to discovery number two. Your trail camera is lying to you. I have thermal footage over an active scrape during peak twilight. Those working that scrape, my trail camera captured them perfectly. But here's what else was there. A mature buck. And I have to have quick context on the county that this was done in. It doesn't grow giants. The biggest buck ever killed in this county scored 155. And the 10th place buck barely breaks 130. So 25 yards out in the shadows away from this scrape, watching this mature buck never committed to the scrape, but he was there in shooting light and in shooting range. The trail camera completely missed him. When I went back to that scrape, it had fresh urine all over it, fresh sign, but my camera data only showed does. This is the ghost buck problem. It's like seeing footprints, but never seeing the person. Trail cameras tell you who worked the scrape. A thermal drone tells you who didn't. That buck who didn't work it is the one that you're hunting. Mature bucks operate in what I would like to call a scrape shadow zone. It's like a security guard watching from the parking lot, close enough to see everything, but far enough from your cameras to miss it. Your camera was pointed at the scrape and he's standing where you can't see it. If you have fresh sign, but only doe photos, don't abandon it. There's a really good chance that, that buck is there and just outside of your frame. Here's a second example. I've got a scrape right here where this hillside meets. Watch what happens when the wind direction shifts. When the wind direction is pointing this direction, the deer will come on the downhill side. When the wind direction is in the other way, the deer come on the uphill side. This isn't rolling hill country. The deer don't get bundled into one path like they do in steep terrains. They've got options, and the mature bucks use the flexibility to still check the scrape, but stay just outside of your trail cram frame. Cover the shadow zone, not just the scrape, and that's how you kill that ghost buck. You're still here because you actually care about understanding deer, not just chasing them. And that's exactly who I built this channel for. Thousands of you subscribed on the last video, and that tells me that this community is full of serious hunters who want results. Hitting that subscribe button costs you nothing and takes just a second, but it helps me keep putting out discoveries like the next one. Tap subscribe and let's jump into discovery number three. Now we know bucks use UV vision to help locate scrapes, and they circle downwind before committing. But here's what brings a cold scrape back to life. Understanding how their nose actually works and how you can trigger it 
in 30 seconds. Discovery number three. The key to reactivating a cold scrape is understanding deer olfaction, how their nose works. And here's what most hunters miss. When a deer smells something, they're detecting volatile organic compounds, VOCs for short. These are molecules that transition from a liquid or solid into gas. And once they're airborne, deer can detect them. It's the same way that our nose works. They're just significantly more sensitive. So when you have moisture in the soil, it allows those scent compounds to transition from a liquid in the ground to a gas in the air. And that's why bucks often hit scrapes hard after a rain. But here's what's really happening when that buck works the scrapes. The deer have interdigital glands between their hooves, basically between their toes. And so every time they paw the ground, they're depositing specific scent compounds from those glands. That's how they mark their territory. And you can hack this without waiting for a rain. Here's how. First, human urine. If you run out from hitting four or five different scrapes, there's another little trick. Take a water bottle with you to your scrape. Fill it with creek water and then pour just enough to dampen the top layer of soil. Not to soak it. You want the surface moist enough so that the VOCs can evaporate throughout the day. If you're using human urine, you're adding ammonia, and ammonia is a VOC compound that releases quickly into the air. Then take a stick and work the soil. Fluff it up. When you disturb fresh earth, you're releasing compounds that create that fresh dirt smell. This VOC signals recent activity, so a moist, disturbed soil triggers that buck instinct to come back in and paw it, which deposits more interdigital compounds, which creates the feedback loop. You don't need gallons of water just enough moisture on the topsoil to enable evaporation. That's what reactivates the scrape. So what does all this mean? Scrapes aren't just scent stations. They're communication hubs operating on wavelengths that we're completely blind to. Visual wavelengths, UV glow that we can't even see, spatial pattern, shadow zones where our cameras miss, chemical signs, the VOC volatization that we can't detect, but deer can. This isn't about changing one tactic. It's about getting inside of their brain, understanding how they actually process information. And now you can see through their eyes and hunt the way they think. You're still here and that says a lot. And I genuinely appreciate that. You're one of the few actually studying deer and not guessing it. That's exactly who this channel is built for. I know I said it earlier, but please hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the Deer Brain crew and let's figure out the next discovery together. Appreciate it.